Good morning, everyone. Today we are at Wilderness Lakes RV Resort in Menifee, California. And this is a nice place. We like this park. There's quite a few sites here and uh, it's all, you know, decently spread out. There's a lot of water in between the rows of sites, so it's not too hard to get a spot to back in. There's quite a few 50 amp spots. The first night we were here, uh, we didn't get one. We got a 30 amp spot, but the next morning, of course, we drove around and saw one pop up and we went over and grabbed it. So we're quite happy with that. And uh, today is the day we put our solar on. So. I've got a few of our friends that we've already met in the units beside us that are going to come over and help me hoist them up to the roof and I'm going to put the panels down today. So we've got two big panels, they're 425 watts each and that'll give us 850 watts of solar which should be, you know, reasonable, it's a good start and, you know, considering how much we uh, actually do boondock, I'm sure it'll be just fine for us, at least for now. So I'm out here walking Lexi and I'm gonna do that a little more and then head back and prepare for mounting the panels. See you in a bit. So this is where our first two panels are gonna go. First one's gonna be over on this side from the air conditioner back. And the second one's gonna be up in front of that other air conditioner there, the second one, past the satellite antenna. So while I'm waiting for our friends to come over and help hoist up the panels, I decide to look for where the wiring actually comes up to the roof. These coaches and Taker coach are supposed to be pre-wired for adding solar with eight gauge wire. And after looking in the forums and, you know, scouring my rooftop, I didn't find anything exactly the same. But I feel that these two on the left here, considering they're right over the bathroom, that curved skylight is over the shower. They're probably vent pipes for the bathroom sink and toilet and what have you. And then these two on the right over here are not really above any plumbing. The one that's closer to the camera here I was thinking might be a sink vent pipe, but maybe not. But I see in the Integra forum that there's two separate spots where the pre-wiring comes up. So I'm going to pop those two caps off first and have a look and see what's in there. This is the first location closer to the back of the RV. The first one I suspected to have the wires. And when I pry off the cap, of course I loosen the screws first. I'll show you how to do that later. But I pry off the cap and I find two wires. Success. So that is one of the two places where the wiring is supposed to come up. It comes up in two different spots. Not sure why. Also, uh, both spots are near the back of the coach. You know, the coach is 45 feet long. You can see that spot is like right beside where the shower light is. Now here's the second one. This one is up near the, um, you know, the small solar panel that's pre-installed to keep the batteries charged up somewhat. And uh, you can see both locations are near the back of the coach, one in front of and one behind the rear air conditioner. You know, the coach is 45 feet long and these two spots are about six feet apart. I don't know why they do it that way, but that's definitely how it is done. So if you want to see what's underneath your caps, I can tell by the sound of these that these are hooked up to plumbing, but I'm just going to take a look anyway to see if there's anything else there. You can tell where these edges go down. Under there, there's going to be a screw. You can see it there. So really, you only have to take out one screw to see what's there. Of course, you're going to need some die core to repair this after, but it's easy. So if it's going to have wiring in it, you will see it, like in the other ones I showed you. If I haven't showed you yet, you'll see it shortly. If it's just got plumbing, it's going to have a piece of ABS plumbing coming up. So now I can just pry it back and have a look under it. You can see there's plumbing right there. It's a piece of ABS plumbing pipe cut right off. So now I know what's there. I can just put this back in. Put the screw back in. Once I get the screw in, 
a little bit of die core on the corners just to touch it all up again and we're good as new so while i was at it i decided to go up and look at the other caps and what's under them and up by the front satellite dish i opened this one up and there's three coax cables in there and it looks like a power cable and and what have you and then there's the cable that's running the current satellite dish but I don't understand what all this is for. If anybody knows what these are for, let me know. When I look in the uh, cupboard where the uh, cable comes down and plugs into my PVR and stuff, I only see one cable there. So I don't know where these cables are. Maybe they're hidden behind some or what they're even for. If anyone knows, let me know. You got it? Yeah. Look at that, it's almost beer drinking time already. <laughs> I really appreciate this, guys. Yeah. So you'll get our bill. Yeah. We have a, a fifty dollar minimum per person. <laughs> Ready? Yeah. Watch your blanket. Slide it. So this is the approximate location of the rear panel and the front panel is going to be up there between the air conditioners. The rear panel, the power cables come out right under the panel, that's beautiful. And for the front panel, I got to take these cables up here, tie them into this cable set and bring them up here, which is not that big of a deal. Well, I got eight screws in and I hit every stud. Perfect. So, this mushroom cap, the cover's off, the wires are here. This is only for wiring. I can see that, uh, you know, it's been filled in with die core and foam and what have you. So since there's no plumbing here, I can plug this right up after I'm done here. Problem is it's too high for the solar panel to go over it. So I'm going to cut it down. Got a few different things to try here. Get it down to the height I want. And then I'll pack it with some of that foam that was around here and then coat it with Dicor. Axaw blade seems to work. Okay, so you can see down in there what it looks like. I'm just gonna fill that in with Dicor. So I completely filled it with Dicor and then I covered with a Turnabond. That'll definitely never leak.
Well, we got the solar mounted on the roof. Got 425 watts there. Small panel for topping up the engine batteries. And a 425 watt panel up here. Okay, we're inside the coach now. And this panel here is above the main door to come into the rig. And in here, there's all kinds of good stuff. And behind this panel, when you take this out, is where the wiring comes from the roof down to here. It ends, and then there's wiring from here that goes down below into the, the battery bay. So we're going to open this up next. Good morning. Uh, the reason I say good morning is because I got up very early to do this. These are 50 volt panels. And anything over 30 volts could be dangerous, so... I'm doing this before sunrise so I can get a little bit of light on the panels and get some voltage tests. What I have here is two sets of wires. There's four here and four there. And I suspect originally that one set of these comes from the roof and one of them goes to the battery bay. But now that I'm testing them, I can see that this one here, I'm getting some voltage on. About five volts. The sun is just starting to come up. And when I test the other leads here, I'm not getting anything. And then when I go over to these ones, I'm getting four volts or so. And then I go to these ones and I'm not getting anything again. It looks like the power comes in here and it's meant to go back down to the battery bay. And then the power comes in here and goes back down to the battery bay. So this is one run. And this is another run. So this will be my final connection to the basement. Once I have everything done down there, I'll uh, connect these up here. And uh, of course the breakers will be off. Everything will be off when I make that connection. I've already connected it upstairs on the roof. That's why I'm getting voltage down here because the panels are connected to these cables. So when I go to connect to make the final connection, these will probably be live this afternoon with about 50 volts in it when I do that. So what I'm going to do to protect them myself is I'm going to use these Morris connectors. I love these things. And I'm going to put one on the hot here for the positive because I wired the black is negative and the white is positive, which in some ways would be different than what most people would do. But I have red and black wires on the roof and red and black wires in the bay. So I just hook black to black and red to white. But anyway, since this is getting voltage now, I'm going to protect myself by putting a Morse connector on this side. And this one here is getting voltage. I'm going to put a Morse connector on that side. And that way there's no way of me touching a, a live hot positive. I just want to reconfirm which is hot here. Okay, we're up to 8 volts on that now. So I'm going to put this one over what I've wired as the positive and tighten that in. Okay, and I'm going to make it nice and snug. Now, I suspect that since there's a screw here and it's holding this wire in, that screw will be live later too. So I'm going to put rubber black tape around my screwdriver so nothing can be hot when I'm working with it. So that one is hot. <clears throat> I've got another one here which I already opened up. Just going to reconfirm which is hot over here. Yes, it's that one. So that one I'm getting about, let's get this properly on there. We're up over six volts on that one now, seven volts. So that's definitely the hot on this side. Okay, and that's on nice and tight. So now I can handle these easily without worry of getting a shock.
Okay, so those wires come down from the panel up above and they go into this bay here. This is my battery bay. And what they do is they come down in behind this board here. This used to be where the SLA batteries were. I use it for tools now and I put a board across there, but there's quite a bit of wiring back inside there. And uh, what I did was the white and black wire coming from the other side. I ran it over through the wall here and I brought and I put red tape on the white so you could show it's positive. And I ran the one panel here and the other panel through their own breakers into this joiner and into the solar controller. And then I also ran the black wire, joined them up in here, one black wire from each solar panel and joined them in here. In the future, if I could ever fit another solar controller in here, more panels on the roof, I can just split the wiring here and change it up above. But that's why I did it this way. Each panel is on its own wire from the roof. So that works really well. It keeps the amps down and you know, the wire's cool, but a lot of people say that, uh, you know, the default wiring that they include in these coaches is eight amp and it's not good for this. But if you measure the footages out and look at the charts, it's absolutely fine for what I'm doing here. Anyway, the power comes into the solar controller here here and then it goes out on the red here onto this red terminal here and then the black comes out and it goes up to that terminal way up there and that is just after the shot there so everything gets measured and that's it so i did a lot in here if you want to see any more about all this i did quite a few videos on it feel free to check those out and now i'll show you what i did when i went back up after this was all wired i shut the breakers out and then i went back up and did the final connection up above in that panel above the door so now I've finished hooking up the cables inside. I put the caps back on and everything's nice and tight. I put some red on the white wire so it shows that it's positive. Same with here. So both lines up here are hooked up. This could be closed up and put back inside. Okay guys, I shot that video, uh, most of the footage about a year ago when we were in California and right now we're in florida it's a year later i'm finally putting it together and i hope you, i got it together in a way that it makes sense we did quite a bit of videos on our inverter setup our batteries how it all works the solar panels we really have quite the setup how we can run uh, a 50 amp coach in a 30 amp park you know how we can run in cold weather in a 30 amp park without using propane um, really lots of lots of uh, different videos we did on this stuff so hope you enjoyed it and if you're interested in any of that or you have any questions please ask leave a comment below and uh, give us a thumbs up and thanks for watching bye now